Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters, grace and peace. My name is Brother Yehuda, and today's topic is the creation. God creates heaven and earth. We're going to be, we're going to start off in the, the Old Testament, the first book in the Old Testament, the Torah, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And then we're going to continue all the way down to the book of Malachi. Now we're going to start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, nothing is impossible for you. You conquered death and darkness, and by doing so, you made a way for me to know you personally. Wow, thank you, my Lord Jesus Christ. Whether I grow weary, worn, or anxious, please remind me that you're in control. I don't have to fear anything because you have and you will always protect me. You are always near in Christ Jesus' almighty name, I pray. May God be the glory as I walk, live, and pray in your image and likeness, the fruit of the Spirit. I come in love and leave in peace. Grace and peace to all the saints. Amen and amen. Now we're going to go in the book of Genesis, the Torah, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And the, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, in these verses, we have the work of creation. It is written works, and it is unborn. Now, in its right, written works in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now, where we find, to our comfort, the first article of our creed that God, the Father Almighty, is the maker of heaven and earth. And as such, we believe in him. Now, let's observe in this verse four things. One, the effects produce the heaven and earth. That is the world, including the whole frame and furniture of the universe, the world and all things therein. We're going to go in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 24. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So when a person says we're in the house of God and it's just a building, no, we're not in the house of God. The house of God is within you. You are the temple of God. Now, the world is a great house consisting of upper and lower stories and structures, stately and magnificent, uniform and convenient, and every room well wisely furnished. It is the visible part of the creation that Moses here designed to account for. Therefore, Moses mentioned not the creation of angels. Now, as the heaven has not only its surface adorned with growth, with grass and flowers, but also its boughs enriched with metal and precious stones, which partakes more of its solid nature and more valuable. Though the creation of them is not mentioned here, so the heavens are not only beautified to our eyes with glorious lamps, with garnish, it's outside of whom of whose creation we here read, but they are within replenished with glorious beings out of our sights, more celestial and more surpassing them in worth and excellency than the gold and sapphires surpass the lilies of the field. Now the in the visible world it is easy to observe great varieties, several sorts of being vastly differing in the nature and constitution from each other. Lord, how manifold are thy works and all good. Two, great beauty. Now the assured sky and verdant earth are charming to the eye of the curious spectator. Much more the ornaments of both. Now how transcendent then must the beauty of the creator be three great exactness and accuracy now to those that with the help of microscopes and narrowly looking look into the work of nature they appear far more fine than any other works of art 
four, great power. It is not a lump of dead and inactive matter, but there is virtue, more or less, in every creature. The heaven, the earth itself, has a magnet power. Five, great order, a mutual dependency of being in exact harmony of motion and an ad- a admirable chain of connection of cause. Six great mysteries. There are phenomena in nature which cannot be solved, secrets which cannot be fathomed nor accounted for, but from what we see of heaven and earth, we, mu- we may easily enough infer the eternal power of and Godhead of the great creator and may furnish ourselves with abundant matter for his praise and let our make and place as men remind us of our duty as believers, which is always to keep heaven in our eyes and the earth under our feet. Now the author and cause of this great work, God, the Hebrew word is Elohim, which bespeaks the power of God, the creator. El signifies the strong God and what less than almighty strength could bring all things out of nothing. Nothing but it could only be a God to do that. The plurality of persons in the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now this plural name of God in Hebrew, which speaks of God as many, though God is one, was to the Gentiles preferred a savior of death unto unto death, hardening them in their idolatry, but it is to us a savior of life unto life, confirming our faith in the doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which though but dark darkly intimate in the Old Testament is clearly revealed in the New Testament. So the stuff that's in the Old Testament is clearly revealed once you come into the New Testament. You start getting better understanding. Now the Son of God, the eternal word and wisdom of the Father was with God when God made the world. We're going to go in the book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 30. Then I was by him as one brought up with him and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Because a lot of people don't understand that Christ was in the beginning, before the world was even made, before the foundation of the world, God, Christ was with the Father. When God said, let's make man in our image, he was talking to the Son. And the Son manifests that. God spoke it. Christ is the Word. Christ manifested. And a lot of people have problems understanding that. Nay, we are often told that the world was made by Christ and nothing made without Christ. We're going to go in the book of John to get clarity on that. Chapter 1, verse 3 and 10. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. 10. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. We're going to go in the book of Ephesians, get more information about that. And to make all men see that is the fellowship of the mysteries, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So it says the mysteries and it was hidden in the beginning. Because, and that's why if you read start reading the New Testament and stay out of the Old Testament, you'll start understanding much better and clearly of what's going on here. The create, who created all things by Jesus Christ. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So it's telling you all things were created by Jesus Christ for Jesus Christ. God gave him that authority. That's where it came from. So people have questions on that. But it's written. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. Has in those, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom has appointed heirs of all things by whom also he made the world. 
That's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 2. Now, let's read that again, because I don't want to go over nobody's head. I want you to understand this. Has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the world. So, that what, what Hebrews is telling, what's speaking of in this, in this verse here, is telling us that God spoke to us through his son in these last days. Who has made the world is just is clearly letting you know that. So we shouldn't have any confusion based on Christ created to make making the world. Oh, what high thoughts should this form in our minds of that great God whom we draw nigh to in the gospel worship and that great mediator, which is Jesus Christ, in whose name we draw nigh. Now, the manner in which this work was affected, God created it. That is, made it out of nothing. Now, there was not any pre-existent matter out of which the world was produced. Now, the fish and the folly were indeed produced out of the water and the beast and the man out of the earth. But the, that earth and those waters were made out of nothing. Now, by the ordinary power of nature, it is impossible that anything should be made out of nothing. Because that's the way the world thinks. Now, no inventor can work unless he has something to work on. That's how people think when you're in the flesh. But by the almighty power of God, it is not only it's not only possible that something should be made of nothing. The God of nature is not subject to the laws of nature. But in the creation, it is impossible. It should be otherwise. For nothing is more harmful to the honor of the eternal mind than the, the suppos supposition of eternal matter. Now the excellency of the power is of God and all the glory to him. Now when this work was produced in the beginning, that is in the beginning of time, when that clock was first set on going, Time began with the production of those be being that are measured by time. Now, before the beginning of time, there was none but that infinite being that inhabits eternity. Now, should we ask why God made the world so s no sooner? We should be dark, dark in counsel by words without knowledge for, for how could there be sooner or later in eternity? And God did make it in the beginning of time, according to God's eternal counsel before all time. Now it is now to us. It is enough to say in the beginning was the word. We're going to go in the book of John, chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So it's telling you in the beginning was the word. The Christ is the word of God. So in the beginning was Jesus Christ with God. Before the foundations of the world. Now let, let us learn here. The atheists is folly. And atheists are the greatest fools in nature. For they see there is a world that could not make itself. And yet they will not own there is a God that made it. Doubtless they are without excuse. But the God with the little g. The devil of this world has blinded their minds. Now that God is a ruler. Our God is the ruler, the Lord of all by incontestable rights. Now, if he is the creator, no doubt he is the, the owner and possessor of heaven and earth. Now that with God, all things are possible and therefore happy are the people that have him for their God and whose help and hope stands in Jesus name. We're going to go in the book of Psalm, chapter 121, verse 2. Help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 121, verse 2. Now we're going to go in the book of Psalm, chapter 124, verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. That's in the book of Psalm, chapter 128, verse 8. Now that the God we serve is worthy of and yet is exalted far above all blessings and praises. We're going to go in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 5 and 6. Then the Levites, Jeshua, Kadima, 
Bani, Hashahaban, Hashahabana, Shariba, Hodija, Shibana, and Pehaya said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever, and blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessings and praises. 6. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven and made heaven, the heavens of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the sea and all that is therein, and thou pres- preserveth them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Now, if he made the world, he needs not our service, nor can be benefited by them. So why are people building, saying, building this is these buildings, saying this is the house of God? You know, you don't need no handouts for man. The book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 24 and 25. God that has that that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Once again, 25. Neither is worth worship. Neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath, breath, and all things. Yet, and yet God justly, and yet God justly requires them and deserve our praises. We're going to go in the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, if all is of God, all must be to God. Now, here is the work of creation in its, un, in its unborn, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the, of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, where we have an account of the first matter and the first mover, now a chaos was the first matter. It is here called the earth, though the earth, properly taken, was not made until the third day. We're going to go in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 10. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Now, because it did most resemble that which afterwards was called earth, myrrh earth, destitute and its ornaments, such a heavy, unwildly mass was it is also called the deep, both of for its vastness and because the waters which was afterwards separated from the earth were now mixed with it. Now this extremely large mass of matter was it out of which all bodies, even the firmament and visible heavens themselves, were afterwards produced by the power of the eternal word. Now the creator could have made his work perfect at first, but by this gradual proceeding, he will show what is ordinary, the method of his providence and grace. Now, let's observe the description of this chaos. Now, there was nothing in it desirable to be seen, for it was without form and void. Toho and boho, confusion and emptiness. So these words are rendered Isaiah 34 and 11. But the the cormorant and the bitter shall possesses it. The owls also, the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the land of confusion and the stones of emptiness. Now it was shapeless, it was useless, it was without inhabitants, without ornaments. The shadows are rough, dwarfed, of things to come and not the image of the things we're going to go on the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 for the law having the shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifice which they offered year by year continually make the comers 
unto perfect. In other words, he's saying all the sacrifices that they was doing, the bulls or rams, it couldn't make you perfect. You had to wait for the real lamb to come, which is Jesus Christ. Now, the earth is almost reduced to the same condition again by the sin of men under which the creation groans. Now, let's see the book of Jeremiah, chapter four, verse twenty three. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. Now I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void. Now to those who have their hearts in the heavens is lower world, in, the, in this lower world is comparison with that upper still appears to be nothing but confusion and emptiness. Now, there is no truly beauty to be seen, no satisfying fullness to be enjoyed in this earth, but in God only. Now, if there had been anything desirable to be seen, yet there was no light to see it by, for darkness, thick darkness, was upon the face of the deep. Now, God did not create this darkness as he is said to create the darkness of the affliction in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 7. I formed a light. I created darkness. I make peace and created evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, it was only the want of light which yet could not be said to be wanted until something was made that might be seen by it, nor needs the want of it be much complained of when there was nothing to be seen but confusion and emptiness. Now, if the work of grace in the souls is a new creation, this chaos represents the state of an unregenerated, graceless soul. There is disorder, confusion, and every evil works. It is empty of all good, for it is without God. It is dark. It is darkness itself. Now, this is our condition uh, by nature. Until almighty grace effects a blessed change. Now, the spirit of God was the first mover. God moved upon the face of the water. Now, when we consider the earth without form and void, me think it is like the valley full of death and dry bones. Now, can these live? Can this confused mass of matter be formed into a beautiful world? Yes, it can. If a spirit of life from God enter into it. We're going to go on the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy until the wind, prophesy son of man, and say of the wind, thus say the Lord God. Come from, come from the four winds, O breath, and breath upon thy, these slain that they may live. Now there is hope considering this thing for the spirit of God begins to work. And if God works, who or what shall hinder? God is said to make the world by his spirit. We're going to go on the book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse six. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. We're going to go on the book of Job, chapter 26, verse 13. By his spirit, he has garnished the heavens. His hands has formed the crooked serpent. And by the same mighty worker, the new creation is effective. God moved upon the face of the deep as Elijah stretches his himself upon the dead child as a hen gathers her chickens under the wings and hoovers over them to warm and cherish them. We're going to go in the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that thou that killeth the prophets and stoned them, which are sent up unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy chicken together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wing, and ye would not. Now, as the eagle stares up her nest, and flutters over her young, it is the same word that is here used in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, flutters over her young, spreadeth ab aboard her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Now let's learn here that God is not only the author of all beginning, but the fountain of life and spring of motion. 
Now, dead matters would be forever dead if God did not quicken it. And this makes it credible to us that God should raise the dead. Now, that power which brought such a world as this out of confusion, emptiness, and darkness at the beginning of time can at the end of time bring our vile bodies out of the grave, though it is a land of darkness as darkness itself and without any order and can make them glorious bodies. We're going to go on the book of Job. This is going to conclude. We're going to go on the book of Job, chapter 10, verse 22. A land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadows of death without any order and were where the light is as darkness. So that concludes this segment of the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 2, the creation. We'll be, we'll be continuing on with this, the next part. The chapter chapter two, chapter one verse chapter one verse three, and four. We'll continue on with that. Um, thank you. Have a blessed day. Any questions? I hope you was edified. Any questions? Feel free. I hope you was edified. Grace and peace, and have a blessed day. We love you.